Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. I do want to put Purdue season into perspective. Guys. And, and Henson, I'll start with you on this because I think I think that what they did was an unmitigated success. Like, I, I don't think that you can criticize them. I know that people are going to say, like, they didn't win the championship. Zach, you never won a championship, all this. Like, winning winning national titles is not an easy thing to do. They made it to the national title game. They got to the stage that they wanted to be on. They proved what they are. And I think that I was – I just – I can't say enough good things about this Purdue team and this Purdue program. Yeah. The weight of the world is on their shoulders this year. That's tough. Um I, for one, wasn't the biggest Purdue fan getting to the national championship, so that was impressive for me. Um, they just came up against a juggernaut, but, I mean, they did what they needed to do. They redeemed themselves, and, um, I mean, that, that program's in good hands, man. It, it's, it's That's a basketball school, uh, so you know, I think they'll be fine. No, listen, I mean, again, what Tanner's done here, and not with his back against the wall, but certainly a lot of people questioning him after last year. As embarrassing a loss as we're going to have. And he's come out and took it, all the shots, put it out there, put it on him. And tonight it just, listen, they were beaten by a better team. Ultimately, they were beaten. Everybody has been beaten by a better team. They would have had to play when you actually see it out there. They And I was kind of hoping for a really good game, which is probably why I picked Purdue. Um, they would have had to play their A game. And you kind of wouldn't have had to play their C game. Let's call it for what it is. Had this Purdue team come back and had an early first round exit, what's the difference in, from a local perspective uh, or national perspective of Cal and sure. Matt Painter? No, people are saying like because he people were going to win in the tournament. People were going to question That's whether he could win again if, he had, if they had another first round exit. So for this team to come back shows you the toughness that they were to come back and respond from that moment, not not shy away from it, own it, embrace it. More importantly, attack it. Uh, credit to Matt Painter and that staff and those players, you know. But but really for Matt, and I said that before, I thought this style for him to make it this far is amazing. And and you can't discredit that. And you got to be really, really happy for him. But he would have caught a lot of flack with a two-time back-to-back national player of the year and had an early round exit. He was loyal, right, to his team. He got one transfer. Yep. Right? Tom Izzo was loyal. Didn't really work for Izzo. It worked for Painter. He kept this team together, and it paid off because they got, again, within one win, one win of, of, of getting the national title. He, he He's put himself certainly in the Hall of Fame now as well because without a Final Four, probably not a Hall of Fame coach. Now you got that Final Four. You got that national title appearance. All right. I want to I wanna ask you He's guys. earned it. Let's put let's put a bow on Zach Eady's career. Two time national player of the year. He just had thirty seven to ten in the national championship game in a loss. Henson, when you look back at Zach Eady's career in ten years, what are we gonna say about him? I I, I mean it's gonna kinda be like I we're gonna remember this run and remember how he was as a player. Um he he dominated at his position and this time and stayed at the school he was at and, and I respect it and, and it's good to see. I, I love seeing players because you know we talk about all the women have the household names with the college basketball zach Eady is a household name in america and so uh, I, I love that for him and hope it does well professionally um it's time for him to get paid i'm pretty confident i'll go to my grave with him being the last dominant big to dominate the game in this manner yeah. like this offensively with those type of numbers i don't think another guy the last one in a long time in my lifetime i don't know you might be a grizzled dude i i, I think it, I, yeah I, I i hope i'm not there i hope i'm not here that long but i think it's i, I don't think it'll happen in the next 20 25 years i really don't i think he's because of the game has changed no one what what elite program plays like this with a big guy? That that's the focal point of their offense. That everything runs through him. Only this is a big. unique. This is a Only unique style and, and that, that so many analytic coaches they just go away from. It's like this. This is what I said to Matt, oh, Matt Payne, Purdue. Not many teams and players play like this. Credit to him and his stamina, his size. But here's here's the thing. So they had players that were this big that were very very good before. Isaac Haas, for example. He this, wasn't this guy. But what I'm saying is. He was not the same level as Zach Eady. We will see other players like Isaac Hobbs. 
I don't think we're ever going to see someone that could do all of the stuff that Zach Eady could do and be as dominant as Zach Eady was. It's just I don't think it's going to happen because I think he's a generational kind of a talent. I, I've i been doing this for about 15 years, right? I'm thinking in like the last two decades, the, the three best players, the three most accomplished, the three greatest college basketball players have been Hansborough, Jalen Brunson, and then Zach Eady. You can put Hansborough and Brunson whatever order you want. Careers, you mean? Careers, yeah. I think that that, that Hansborough probably had the better Brunson career because of the win. I don't know. If Brunson yeah, because he of was, he, he won two titles. He got he two was, titles. He got two he titles. Got two he titles. Won national Player of the Year as a senior, which he yes. was the reason why Villanova was as good as they were. I wouldn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah, no, he's up there. Those three guys, you can't argue any of those three guys. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are partnered with Bet. MGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines for making all of our picks and predictions, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM. Here's the best part. All you need to do is deposit and bet $10 of your hard-earned money to get it. This is what you have to do to make it work. Download the BetMGM app and sign up using that bonus code FIELD. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. You'll get up to $1,500 in bonus bets if your bet loses. Just make sure you use that bonus code FIELD when you sign up. Most importantly, we have some fun stuff coming up for the rest of the NCAA tournament. Bet insurance tokens, college hoops odds boost, and the thing that I love the most, a nice little parlay boost, as well as a ridiculous array of prop bets for anything that you could possibly imagine betting on. From odds on getting to the Final Four to National Championship futures, I'm calling it right now. BetMGM is the king of the prop bet. So go download the BetMGM app. Use that code FIELD and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod in any podcast app. Like and share the YouTube videos that you enjoy. Tell your friends about us. It all helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. 